everyone and welcome to the unrest podcast i'm madeline green i'm caitlin stancil i'm carter coyle this week i wanted to kind of come up with some stories and my mind drifted to haunted houses and i started looking around and found tons of examples of real life haunted houses but i was drawn to one in the ozarks Ooh, that's so, fun i love the show on netflix um What's the show where they're like laundering money and stuff? The Ozarks. <laughs> that Have was you a seen it. <laughs> that was a quiz. That was a quiz. <laughs> it's called The Ozarks. It's a great show. But there's like something definitely kind of creepy about that area, I think, in some places. And it's so remote. And mm-hmm. you can see how it would be totally easy to like get away with murder and dump a body in a lake. So anyway, um, the hotel I settled or the house slash hotel I settled on, it's called the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And it is known as America's most haunted hotel. Quite the claim, right? Because we always see all sorts of haunted places, but this is supposedly the most haunted. I feel like we really need some kind of like actual certification for those kind of claims. I know. Who's labeling that? (laughs) Yeah, because I feel like at some point or another, we say that about everything. I know. is actually going to be the most haunted such and such or it's america's know. most haunted barn that's how yeah. my story was last week the uh most haunted cemetery in the world that's right and mine Eastside. was like the most haunted bloodiest battlefield but then when i looked up something the other day it was like <laughs> never even listed that one so <laughs> <laughs> i'm not really sure where i got depends that. on who's making the list <laughs> uh this building it was used over, it was built in 1886, and it was used over the years as a school, a spa for medical work, and eventually it was used as a home for cancer patients. So supposedly all of those different eras of care and, you know, kind of sickness and tragedy all left behind ghosts from multiple different eras. And it did become run down over the years, but now it's a fully restored hotel, resort, 70 different rooms, and it looks really beautiful. Um, it, it seems like it'd be a pretty cool place to visit, but uh, visitor beware, because supposedly one reason it's considered one of the most haunted hotels is that a ghost has been experienced in each of the 70 rooms over the years. That's a lot of ghosts. So, Unlike places where we hear, oh, room 219 or room 404 are haunted, like, it sounds like they have had a lot of activity in this hotel. That's pretty And is wild. it still open and, like, running as a hotel? Yeah, it's open and running, and I'm going to show you guys some ghost pictures later, but I'll give you a peek at kind of um, what it looks like today. It's really beautiful, so this will at least give you an idea of what it looks like now. So it's huge. Hmm. It's big and it's fancy. I love the openness of the front of it. Yeah, like all these huge porches on every level. And um, I'm wondering if it has... And and then even on their home page, they claim to be America's Most Haunted Hotel. And then I'm going to show you guys some of these ghost pictures they have that have been seen before. But they definitely embrace their haunted history, which I think is fun. So why would it have become the most haunted hotel? Well, it has quite a sordid past. And one of the most uh, well-known stories is about Dr. Norman Baker, who was the owner of the property. I heard that name, I feel like. Maybe so. Not Norman Bates. Norman Baker. Oh. (laughs) Sorry, Caitlin. But um, Dr. Norman Baker owned it in the 1930s. He was apparently an inventor, a stage performer, made lots of money. I saw one place where he was listed as being a millionaire, which, of course, in the 30s would have been just a crap ton of money. Right. And unfortunately was greedy enough to want more money. So what he did was buy up the Crescent Hotel, and he set up a fake hospital spa inside of it and bragged that he could cure cancer so we're already dealing with a pretty much a scumbag at this point because he's bragging that he can cure cancer but he only cares about the money and on top of all of that the real problem is that dr norman baker was not actually a doctor 
Oh, that's great. So <laughs> here he is pretending to cure cancer and, oh, I've got this hospital spa that if you come, you'll be cured. And yet, no, not the case. So I'm, um, this, a lot of my information today, I found this uh, article that the Crescent Hotel posted from Ranker's website, and it is a really great article. So I give them much credit for helping me with the research today. Um, and here's a quote from the article. Baker reportedly made advertisements claiming that other hospitals and doctors were not treating cancer correctly, that surgery and radiation were harmful and ineffective, and he recommended his patients go to the hotel instead so they could receive injections that he had invented and just go home cured. Well, the injections were little more than tea and cloves and carbolic acid, which did not cure anyone's cancer. And while the injections were not lethal, the patients still all died because their condition of actual cancer went completely untreated. And apparently before investigators discovered his scheme, he was earning like a half a million dollars a year. Wow. So really bad stuff. Apparently he also had an obsession with the color purple. So a lot of the decor was purple. He always wore purple. Kind of a, a weird caveat. Um so he's running this whole hospital spa scam trying to pretend he can cure cancer, which is just like so messed up. Eventually the basement act essentially becomes a morgue because he's got so many people dying that they're like, well, we better set up a morgue on site. And essentially, so you can imagine like how many people died, like slow and painful deaths there thinking that they were going to be cured. Okay. Happy days. Sorry. That's kind of depressing. <laughs> so you would think, you know, eventually, thankfully, investigators did discover his scheme and you would think that crimes like stealing all this money from people because they're obviously paying a lot of money for these uh, fake cures and he's impersonating a doctor, he, you know, essentially he's not, he's facilitating these slow and painful deaths. So in our minds, you think, oh, they catch him, he's going to serve a long prison sentence, right? Well, this Ranker article says, no, that didn't happen with Baker. Instead, he was arrested and basically kind of uh in these situations we see with rich people sometimes he's b just convicted of mail fraud what huh so i'm guessing That's from like email or from email from mailing out uh, um you know probably false claims that's all that's all they got him on and people are willingly taking this treatment of course so yes it was misleading but at the same time they're ma they're making that decision and 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 not unfortunately doing the research or at least believing kind of what this doctor says it says since his injection injections didn't actually kill anyone directly he didn't face charges for any deaths of those patients mm. he was probably he, like well it was just tea and cloves yeah like yeah. I, thought, I thought it was a cure like i was all natural so, some kind yeah. of acid <laughs> yeah so he received a four-year prison sentence and that was mostly just for the swindling of them uh, swindling the cancer patients out of their money not for any of the deaths that he was let's be real totally responsible for because he convinced these people not to get actual treatment that would work but right. um and then he got out of prison four years later and lived comfortably in florida until he died a uh, long time later so good for uh, dr baker but bad for all the patients over the years who died there and apparently still haunt this hotel um, some guests have reported seeing and hearing nurses with medical carts walking through the hallways, which mm. I can totally hear that in my head, like that clinking of medications and <laughs> squeaky carts, like, ooh, that's a creepy movie scene, right? Others have seen nurses pushing gurneys towards the basement, which was the morgue area. Other reports say that Dr. Baker himself might actually haunt the hotel because a, a shape of a, someone wearing purple... Uh, is reportedly seen often in the old recreation room, in the basement, at the foot of the stairs, and the the pictures that they've captured, or the spirit resembles pictures of Baker, according to people who've seen it. So, um, that's that's a that's a, a one theory is that he died and was kind of back there haunting the place. There's a ghost called Theodora, who's a, apparently a former cancer patient who still hasn't left room 419. And that uh, anybody who disturbs her her room by staying there say that their belongings get organized and uh, the, the visitor's bags get packed because she's hinting, I want you to get out of here. Oh, She's not a malicious spirit, but uh, she's basically just like, um, don't okay. stay. <laughs> Any, anytime now, let me help you pack. 
um, before it was actually a hospital, it was conservatory for young women. So it, it, during the college off season, there was a lot of college students there and um, ap apparently a young woman died when she jumped from a balcony and no one still, no one to this day knows whether she was pushed or whether she committed suicide. But today people still report seeing her restless spirit on that balcony and hearing her screaming. Now, one other thing that this article pointed out is that not all the ghosts are suffering souls. Some might be uh, just interested in, in having a good time and partying in the afterlife because hotel employees have seen Victorian figures dressing, uh, dancing and drinking all dressed up. Paranormal partying is what the Ranker article calls it in the early morning um, and that they've seen well-dressed men having a drink or one who said, oh, I'm waiting for a woman I saw last night and hotel workers claim that they've seen spirits of brides and grooms also appearing in the dining room mirror. What? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when we say paranormal activity, I mean, we've got the range from sad nurses and patients to like a par straight up party ghosts. Dang. Um, it sounds like most of them are not harmful or aggressive, but get mischievous, like to move things around at night. Um, apparently one Christmas, the decorations and the whole Christmas tree moved across the room. And when the staff come, came down in the morning, there was menus everywhere. The tree had been moved. So it was definitely kind of a mischievous, uh, they think, little boy who has been spotted skipping around the halls and playing. Um, and you can stay the night there, but usually it's all booked up because so many hunting, uh, ghost hunting groups and TV shows have investigated the hotel so it's really po popular and super for its supernatural phenomena and it's booked out months in advance so oh. we, we can go y'all but we gotta book it for yeah we gotta book it early in 2022 <laughs> it says october is the peak time because paranormal Four. investigation and festivals and ghost celebrations draw everyone to the hotel and everyone wants to stay there during uh, the creepy season so here i will share and we can look at some of these pictures that have been captured by guess and i have not looked at these really up close either so i thought we could look at them together so this one is labeled ghost scene in the main lobby oh dang so this looks like a big wisp of a huge wisp of smoke of maybe a ghost that was sitting down and like rushing off maybe. right that old victorian furniture let's see this one is um wispy looking as well yeah this one says ghostly image in a jacuzzi suite oh oh i see so here's the go here's the jacuzzi oh and it looks yeah that's almost alien like i mean it's very bright it could be a reflection i think but off what because it's totally dark outside yeah and there's just so much of it like across the bed yeah up here i i i don't know that's mm -hmm. Different. This one says unknown mist in front of hotel. So probably not a ghost, but definitely gives it a ghostly appearance. It does look like a fun, pretty place to party. Yeah. <laughs> Make for a nice background. This one's called Mysterious Woman Walking Upstairs. Uh Ooh. excuse me. This is like in a mirror. It's very distinctly a woman in old fashioned dress with her mm -hmm. hair, her hair pinned up. And it's like her image is where those lights are so it's not like right so she couldn't be on the ceiling right yeah now. Ooh, or could she <laughs> this says baby face in a mirror oh okay do you see it so here? You just see like yeah but it's just like the side of its face kind of oh. yeah i'm not i'm not seeing that one <laughs> I see where I think I'm supposed to see it. Yeah, but I don't see a baby that face. That just looks like the mirror's dirty, kind of. <laughs> yeah, that could be smudges. That could be smudges, Crescent Hotel. Strange figure in the in the window. That one's pretty cool. That one I almost can see better from far away down here. Uh -huh. Like, this looks like a face in a... Oh, yeah. Actually, now that I see it in a dress. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's creepy. I mean, it looks like a parrot sitting on someone's shoulder. Mm -hmm. Or a parrot. <laughs> exactly. You just never know. I told you there was a range of ghosts. Here. This one's pretty cool. Misty image mm -hmm. in a garden. That is... The only bad thing is 
it, it kind of reminds me of like the smoke coming off of like a match hopefully it's not but or like a sparkler you know they leave big wisps of smoke like that but still pretty cool looking and it's very dark so and then this is a close-up of a girl's face on the wall i mean i do see that yeah obviously <laughs> that's creepy as shit <laughs> if i saw that in the mall <laughs> weird but then it's like you know, did someone just Photoshop this? Oh, it's so hard for me to believe it. Gosh, Caitlin, jeez, bringing the cri- <laughs> bringing the critical eye today. <laughs> anyway, um, definitely check out America's Most Haunted Hotel dot com slash photos, and you can see all eighty six of these creepy pictures and figures face in the ceiling. No, well, actually, I see it. I mean, I see it, but I can see a face in my own ceiling if I really yeah. wanted to. True true but these are fun these are fun oh oh look at this creepy mirror one yeah that one's pretty cool that's good something about like a totally void figure is almost like just all black it's, yeah you know, is almost cr- the creepiest because it's like no eyes no clothes yeah. it's just ugh. anywho y'all uh, that's the crescent hotel I, if anyone's ever been let us know if you're an ozarks fan that great tv show <laughs> <laughs> well today's haunted history has nothing to do with hotels or haunted houses but um it does have to do with halloween Woohoo! and uh we're talking one of the most i would say probably the most common or iconic halloween costumes that people pick and how its most recognized accessory came to be that's fun wow yeah, what so a tease that was great can you um can you guess what might be the most common or notable halloween costume devil i'm thinking no. that the scream mask no pumpkin like many of the um things that we've been talking about being like the most haunted or whatever this is not like a credible um analysis this is just me saying i think oh, that witches oh, oh. are really common halloween oh. costumes <laughs> okay oh, i thought it's a like, witch would be a really obvious one but uh apparently I, not <laughs> yeah no but witches i was to- i was definitely a witch one year and i remember sitting on a broomstick on my swing in the backyard pretending i was flying i was a witch, been a witch? Adeline's a witch every you know, saturday <laughs> yep <laughs> Maybe you were like a sexy witch when you were older, or uh, like my cousin's little daughter, she wanted to be a purple witch this Halloween. Well, that's fun. <laughs> I was like, I was so like a s- the spider witch one time. Oh, Aww. yeah. Our my niece wanted to be a sparkly purple kitty cat this year. So purple. Oh. Something about the purple. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm not sure how well this is going to go since my first question didn't go very well, but what do you think is a witch's most notable accessory? Her broom. Ooh, ding, ding, ding. Good job. Um, so really, like, any witch costume, it just can't be complete without the broom. But, you know, where did this come from? Why a broom? And I I always think about Hocus Pocus, though, <laughs> when... Uh, <laughs> Winterbed and Sarah have the broom, and then Mary grabs the vacuum. <laughs> well, Sarah actually has a mop. Winifred's the only one with the broom. At the oh, end. true, true that. Fact check by Madeline, <laughs> the movie expert. Yeah. Anyway, so like you, like you said, you know, there's kind of the stereotype of witches riding on broomsticks. So how did that come to be? Well, a little bit about brooms first. They actually really date back to ancient times. They've even been talked about in the New Testament. Um, People, you know, they might have used bunches of thin sticks or reeds, and they would use it to kind of sweep ash or dust away from their fires or hearth areas. And then, um, you know, for a long time, and even probably now, they're really associated with women and domestic work and chores. But interesting to know, according to history.com, where I got a lot of this info, I can't pronounce his name. It's French, but he was a priest who lived near Paris and he was arrested in the 1400s, tried for witchcraft. And after he was tortured, he eventually confessed and, you know, quote unquote confessed that he, you know, has ridden a broom and he's a witch and he repented of all of this and then spent the rest of his days in jail. (laughs) Hmm. Wow. But what's interesting is by the time he made this confession, brooms were really like well-established as the vehicles that witches used most. 
they just afraid of us women. Mm -hmm. And what's kind of cool is the earliest known image of, you know, witches or what were thought to be witches on broom. And there were some illustrations in a manuscript called the defender of ladies. And if I can share my screen and I did read, I didn't like originally include this in my um, write up today, but I did read that it was thought that witches would leave their brooms by their chimneys or their front doors to signal that they were away. Um, So just another way that brooms are kind of associated with witches. So these are the photos in the manuscript and you can see there are these women. Yeah, those are old. So this has been around for a long time. They're in kind of these long dresses and they have these, I don't know if you call them turbans or like head wraps on. They are sitting on, one of them is definitely a broom. The other, you know, is kind of just like like a a broom stick. Yeah. So what's interesting about this is these women who were written about in this manuscript, they were actually called Waldesians, Waldensians. I don't know how you say it, but they were Christians actually. They were labeled heretics by the Catholic church because in their Christian sect, they believed that women could be priest so exactly no wonder they were threatening yeah (laughs) you know obviously they were kind of sitting on these broomsticks appear to be riding them um and i'm going to get to a little bit more about that in a second but i did want to mention also that brooms kind of um became associated with witches because of pagan rituals and there was this fertility dance that farmers would do where they would jump over brooms or pole sticks in the light of the full moon. So, you know, while they hoped that this would encourage their crops to grow, this broomstick dance became associated with pagan rituals and then, you know, later associated with orgies and all these other illicit meetings. Um, But getting back to riding the broomsticks, you know, obviously broomsticks are kind of a phallic shape, if you will. Uh-huh. Um, so it was thought to be the perfect thing to use for applying ointments, you know what I mean? You know, by riding the broomsticks. So, okay. <laughs> oh, huh. Anti-masturbation kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but also, you know, witches have always been thought to be like healers as well and some of the herbs and stuff they would use to mix up these ointments they could be bad to ingest um by mouth you know causing stomach problems and stuff like that so it was thought that witches would rub these ointments on the broomstick and then quote unquote ride them to absorb the ointment through their skin through their most intimate areas. Oh, this wow. is fantastic information, <laughs> right? So they really became kind of like, I don't know if you call them sexual symbols as well, but there's definitely like an element of sexuality. So that is why witches always need their broomsticks. They can't ever be far away from them. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all like, well, that took a turn. <laughs> it went from sweeping ashes to, to masturbation. Take it off on your broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I do think that like, you know, witches are very associated with like orgies and like just very taboo sexual things. So well too, when you think about them, you know, it's always like a group of them around a campfire or right. like you know, it's always kind of like a group type of thing. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. But huh. And, you know, because most witches are women, women are very associated with sexual things as well. So, of course, like, oh, these are dirty sexual women. Right. You know, they right. must be doing dirty things with their broomsticks. <laughs> God forbid you have a group of women get together. That is going to yeah, that's gonna definitely fire. be a threat. They yeah. don't know how to properly build no bonfire. So what are your thoughts on like witches and witchcraft and that type of thing? Are you guys like a hundred percent like, yeah, that's a thing. Like, I mean, they can do potions. They can do stuff no, like that. Or- I, I think that's pushing it for me. Yeah. I, got you. I think it's interesting. Like, I'm definitely, like, interested in it. 
I don't know, kind of like ghost and stuff. I'm not totally convinced on it, but I think it's interesting. You know, it's kind of like the smudge sticks and stuff like that. Yeah. Do I believe in it? I don't know, but I think they're cool and fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But definitely a, a lot of cool cool facts that's there. Cool. Yeah, that's that was great. That was a great find, Caitlin. Thanks. You know, I just like to enlighten your lives with some haunted history that you might never think of. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you can combine um, the history of sexuality with, de- with the witch history, I- I'm in. And getting your vag ointment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is their way of getting rid of their yeast infections. Who right? Knows? I mean, that's so <laughs> Absolutely. Crazy everyone knows how miserable that is i mean i don't know why a broomstick would be used that sounds like dangerous with splinters and things yeah i mean who <laughs> even comes up with that crazy ass yeah it's like maybe late night television broomsticks for sale <laughs> well, you don't just get one broom you get two <laughs> apply your herbal ointments the natural way with a broomstick <laughs> yeah what is interesting though kind of like what you said madeline broomsticks are like very associated with pagan rituals and even you know a couple months ago we were talking about that thing where people like try to stand try up to, the broomsticks yeah. and it, it's supposed to mean something i don't remember what it means but um it, it's but- just kind of interesting they're so associated with stuff like that Madeline, you've got our real life haunt today. What'd you find? Yeah, so a lady not too long ago, goal. <laughs> many years, long many ago. moons ago. <laughs> not long ago. <laughs> um, she put me in touch with a friend of hers named Kelly, who told her, you know, she has had a lot of paranormal experiences but is not just super open about them. But um, she told me, you know, she definitely sees things and that she has pretty much too many stories to tell. So she's going to just tell us a few of like the most significant ones. But one that the lady who put me in contact with her told me about was like, you know, she's been at uh, locations where she like looks across to a building and senses something from that building. Just so different things like that. So take a listen. So I'm here with Kelly Will. I met her through a mutual friend who has a love of the paranormal and ghosts. And I'm told that she has quite a few stories. So Kelly, fill us in on when these stories started and then kind of maybe share a few stories with us. Okay, so where do I begin? I actually never had any experience whatsoever almost my entire childhood Mm -hmm. um but I always had like such a fascination for the subject and actually would research it my mom always thought I was like really weird (laughs) (laughs) I can relate (laughs) yeah at, at like a young age and um then unfortunately my mother passed away suddenly and my dad had uh like a obviously I mean for good reason had a you know mental breakdown and he decided he wanted to sell the family home but we had so much of it that uh, like so many things in the house that it was not going to be easy to take everything out so we had to have an estate sale and my dad's like you know what you're in college your college is right down the street from here you're gonna stay here oh no (laughs) uh help me take care of this house and I said okay so I left my college house and I moved in with nobody. It was just me in the house and I was doing estate sales every weekend and, you know, life was pretty normal except for, you know, college and all that crazy stuff. Right. So slowly I began to notice weird things and and one of my friends who, uh, I mean, he'll be a part of the story. He he has not talked to me in probably like 10 years because of all of this. Oh, God. uh, Yeah. I noticed little things like I'd leave the house and I'd come back and I felt like things were moved and I had a puppy with me, my dog Squiggy, who uh, he would be in a crate and then he was very well behaved. Mm -hmm. And one day I came home with this friend from um, we went out for a drink and and the doors in my house, all of them were open, Mm -hmm. which is not normal. And there were just some things all over the house. And I noticed that the dog got sick in the crate and I was like well that's weird why you know why is everything open so at first I thought there was like a home intruder so I panicked yeah 
And I called my dad and I said, hey, dad, you know, the garage door is open. The lights are on. The other doors are open. Did you come by? And he was like, no, I haven't been there. I don't know what to tell you. You probably just left everything on. <laughs> and I was just like, OK. <laughs> so he chalked it off. And then my friend Steve was um, like, you know, it is it is awfully strange. So then he ended up leaving that night. And I just had this very heavy unnatural feeling mm -hmm. and um my house was a very large home in princeton or west windsor new jersey mm -hmm. and i just remember thinking to myself like it's okay and i put on tv and it was funny enough it was i used to love that i think it's hln true crime story oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> late at night and i turned that on and i'm watching it and i was like you know what i'm just freaking myself out i'm good but then i could hear things like uh what sounded like drawers opening and closing mm-hmm and things like that and I, I kind of I kind of thought to myself well you know like the house is really old it's probably just creaking I'm not used to being here alone I'm sure it's fine but then I would be asleep and I always slept on the couch I never went upstairs I don't know why it reminded me of my mom never went upstairs yeah. so I slept on the couch and we had French doors that went from a room that I called the white room <laughs> into the family room. Well, my mom had picked out all white furniture and it was white carpet. And yeah. it's like, if you got, if you got in trouble, you went into the white room to have a <laughs> conversation. So, um, and the doors kept opening and not, not closing on their own, just opening. So I called Steve back over. It was like three o'clock in the morning and he came back and I was just like, Hey, can you go jump? upstairs above these doors because you know watching paranormal investigators and all that stuff I was like we need to discredit this maybe there was a big gust of wind like I was trying to come up with everything and he jumped and we slammed doors and opened them and nothing would recreate it and they would just slowly creak open and it made me very uncomfortable so then Steve ended up staying that night on the couch with me because I was just like a little uncomfortable right and then probably like three days later he was like, hey, you look strung out. Is it school? And I was like, well, it's sort of school, but it's, you know, other things going on. I was like, I'm just not comfortable in my own house. And I couldn't leave because my dad didn't want the house vacant. And uh, let's be serious. Like, you're in college and it's free room and board. Right, you right. Gonna you're going to you're so, gonna just stay. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to stay there. So um, my uh, dad would call and he was like, you know, how are things? And I was like, it's fine. And, of course, like any, you know, college kid or someone I was 21 22 would say uh tell my dad oh you know it's fine like but he never knew that like someone was staying with me because I right. think he probably would have gotten kind of upset but of course <laughs> I was I didn't want to be I didn't want to be alone so it got to the point where I was sleeping with a statue of Mary <laughs> next to me on the couch because I was really scared and Steve was like hey how about we just hang out and watch a movie at the house and I was just like all right well if you're gonna be there then yeah we could watch a movie at the house so we came and we sat and we were watching a movie and um, he started hearing things as well. And I said, I told you I'm not crazy. And I could hear what we had a laundry chute and mm -hmm. it went from my parents' closet to downstairs in the laundry room. And it sounded like clothes were being thrown. And so I kept going to check it out and there was clothes in there, but they were like my mom's clothes. And there was no reason for anything of my mother's to be out oh, wow. of a drawer. Yeah. And so I was like, and then Steve was, he was getting really into it. And he was just like, <laughs> oh my God, it's probably your mom. This is so cool. It's a sign. And I was like, I don't think this is cool. Cause I felt if it was my mom, I'd be comfortable. Right. You know, right. I, I don't think I'd feel so scared. And then he got up cause he was like, um, you know, this movie, it sucks, <laughs> whatever he said. And he was like, let's, let's go, go somewhere. So we went out and, um, we went to the same place every single time in Robbinsville and, we went out and had like a drink or two. And then I was like, you know what? I'm really tired. I want to go home. I've got class, blah, blah, blah. So I go back home and he didn't follow me. I was just like, go home. I'll be fine. And the garage door was open <laughs> again. Gosh. And I, you know, and I, and I thought, okay, maybe it's like electrical, whatever, but it was difficult because I had a garage door opener in my, I had a Jeep Wrangler at the time. Mm hmm and um me being you know typical 21 22 year old i never had the roof on and uh i was hitting the garage door opener and it was fighting me <laughs> like i was closing it and it was opening itself back up and so i was like is there anything blocking it and i checked there wasn't and then it was fighting and fighting and fighting and i said you know what screw this i'm scared <laughs> I was yeah like, i'm not i'm i'm not going in there and it's like the second i said that i said i i said out loud i was like screw this and whatever it was got really mad <laughs> it turned the lights on and like you could sit in my driveway and it was turning the lights on and off in the house like throughout the entire house oh, gosh. i could 
I could see lights flickering and it looked like shadows almost moving in the house. And I was like, okay, I really made it mad. And like I said, you know, Jeep Wrangler, no top on. I feel very insecure. Right, (laughs) right. And so I went to back out of my driveway, which is pretty skinny. So you had to like focus when you're backing out of Mm -hmm. the driveway. And I look up and I see the garage doors opening back up again. And I was like, crap, I can't leave it open. And so I hit the garage door thing again. It finally went all the way down, touched the ground, sat there, didn't move. So I have my arm, my right arm on the passenger seat of the car, and I have my head turned, and I'm backing out of my driveway. And at the very top of my driveway, we had, like, this willow tree, like a little willow tree, and behind it was our pool. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, like, I I just started shaking because I'm thinking about it. Uh, I I was backing out, and I something told me to turn around. (laughs) Oh, God. And I I look up the driveway, and there is this... It, it it sounds so comical when I say it out loud, but it almost looked like a wolf person. Like it was all black and mm-hmm. it looked like fur and it had these two really red eyes Ooh. and it was staring at me. And I was just like, what the hell is that? Yeah. You know, like I, I, and so I gunned it. Like there were tire marks in the driveway and my dad yelled at me the next day. <laughs> and as, as I get to the bottom of our driveway, go to make the K turn as I turn to put it in drive, it's like I blinked and the thing was standing next to my Wrangler. Oh gosh. And I have never hit the gas pedal so hard in right. my entire life. And I was gone and I went to Steve's house and it got worse that night. This oh, was all one night. And I get to Steve's house, and his parents are awake, and they're all trying to calm me down because his parents were kind of into the paranormal thing as well. And they mm-hmm. were like, just tell us what happened. And I was like, I don't know why this is happening to me. And Steve knew because I confided in him that when my mom passed away, I had, like, a really difficult time with God. And I'm not sure if it was just my thoughts or my feelings, but it's like God knew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I – for – lack of better words I kind of cursed him you know like I didn't want anything to do with him at that time and because my mom went in for a knee replacement surgery and she died oh my gosh so I mean it's not like so it's understandable yeah but I was also very strung out from college and so like I think I hit like a weak moment where it's all of a sudden this door opened up that I didn't know that I possessed Mm -hmm. so um I get to Steve's house his parents are finally like you know she's fine calm her down and Steve used to be a bartender like I was so he made me some kind of a concoction I don't know but it it tasted really good and it calmed calmed my nerves but then I changed Uh (laughs) and uh he said that I had like a 30 year smoker's cough oh gosh and he had a BMW it was like some F series BMW it was like really hard to get in good condition and it Mm -hmm. was his baby and I put my fingernails through (gasps) the front windshield the front hood of the car and he didn't panic about it he said I didn't look like me it was if something took over me and then apparently I was speaking Latin like it was really bad (laughs) (laughs) and obviously I don't recall any of it Mm -hmm. um, but he did it, it got to the point where he called his dad down and they were like should we call a priest and they did end up calling a priest that was really bad um but that was all just one night and um I was calling myself Henry and I told Steve's dad that I was under his pool oh gosh and it actually led to the excavation of their pool and they did find human remains (gasps) so obviously no you are kidding me no and this was a while after like the dad I guess Steve was like you know what this is too much for me I have to know I have to know if there's something under there because he stopped talking to me um probably like a month after all this because it was it was hard I mean I sounded like a lunatic right and it got it got worse and worse and I started seeing things we'd go out to a bar and I remember I went up to the bartender and I said same bar we always been to these people knew me for a long time I said uh I thought you can't smoke in here. And the guy's like, you can't smoke in here. And I was like, well, can't you smell it? Someone's smoking in here. Oh God. And he was just like, I thought I smelled smoke, but he's like, nobody's smoking in here. And I turned around and I locked eyes and there was an older gentleman sitting in the corner and he was smoking and he was not there. (laughs) Only I could see him and he was not happy. 
And it's like the second I locked eyes with him, it's like he knew I could see him. Mm -hmm. And then I could never go back to that bar. Right. Ever again. I never went back. And the people thought I was nuts because I was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie? I think it's Insidious, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where he, he goes into, like, that other realm. Right. And there's a part where I think it's in the second or third one where he's like, he's like, can't you see the guy in front of you? And the guy's, like, right in his face saying he has your baby. He right. has your baby. That is the best way to describe my abilities. If hmm. I make contact with them via eyes like and i look at them hard enough because they look like everyone else to me um then it's like they know i know and then they never leave me alone hmm. so i have developed a darting eye problem yeah never <laughs> and, stare at um, someone too long <laughs> and especially living in lexington it's uh difficult because there's a lot of war we have one in our cul-de-sac actually in our neighborhood which um i was very upset because uh, there was a little girl who used to live next door to me and she just moved away, but well, I call her little girl, but she's 15 now. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately she was able to describe what I saw, which means she has it. Too. Yeah. And she won't come over as often anymore because she, I guess, just developed it as well at that age. So she's, she's having a hard time coping with it. But I try to explain to people if I look funny or if I feel uncomfortable or if I get up and I leave, chances are there's something in your house or wherever we are and I made contact with it by accident I can't come back here because <laughs> I I just know that that Henry whoever he was I must have seen him and he latched on to me and it took a priest to get it away from me so it was very scary so the house that you are talking about that was like your childhood house Yes, the house that I was talking about is the place I was born and raised there. And so before your mom passed, nothing like this happened? Never. Hmm. Never. You think it was that questioning of God that kind of brought on this it, gift? I think it could have been me getting so angry with God about my mom. Because you have to also remember, I'm in school and I went to the school because it was where she went to nursing school. Mm -hmm. And... My mom was the high school nurse, so she was able to hand me my high school diploma. When I graduated college, and it was that year that I was supposed to graduate, she was going to hand me my diploma. Uh -huh. And, like, that would have come full circle. At the same time that I'm trying to bust my butt and graduate college, my sister's engaged, and she was set to get married, and my mom died. So right. then I had to take over wedding stuff. I had to clean out my mom's office at the high school. I would, you know, like, it wasn't just school. And then my older sister, Erin, is special needs. And mm -hmm. so, like, I was, everybody was just coping, and there was just so much going on. Like, I didn't even have time to mourn, so I just got angry. Right, right. And it's like, that's what really the stress and everything brought it out and to be honest it hasn't been the same ever again uh when i moved into my first apartment with my now husband kevin that one was so haunted it was ridiculous but which finally i made a believer out of him because he got to experience it with me and there were little kid spirits there were a couple mm. bad ones but there were a lot of little kid spirits and they were running around our house and they would tickle him when he slept oh gosh and he, and he would tell me like you know don't bother me. I'm sleeping. And I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. And um, we were doing construction at the time, which is, I think, why they all came out. There was dust from sanding dust everywhere. And they there would be little kid footprints oh in the gosh. dust. And it was just me and him in the house. Like, no one else was there. So we obviously didn't have any kids at the time. And so, and then we would find, like, smiley faces written in dust and we had an upstairs, like an attic space that the owner of the house, because we were just renting it, said, do not go up there. I'm leaving it locked. Uh -huh. One day he came and took stuff out. And it's like whatever was up there was able to come out at that point. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, we, we should have three wade with Kevin. We had, a, you know, a little get together with friends. And we were playing beer pong. Mm -hmm. And the chandeliers started swinging, and everyone just kind of sat and looked at us. And I was quite intoxicated. <laughs> and I was just like, you better quit it. And it stopped. And oh, they wow. got so scared. And then um, two of the friends came back over the next day, and I said, it lives upstairs. And I knew what it was. I had already seen her. Mm -hmm. It was um, what seemed to be kind of like a house servant from, like, back in the day, and that must have been her quarters. I'm not right. really sure, but she did not like the fact that we were doing what we were doing to the house, and she 
uh, was the one who would swing the chandelier. At least I think she would. And then mm-hmm. um, the problem was is that they didn't believe us. And Kevin was like, fine, if you think you've got the stones to, go upstairs. Yeah. Go ahead. Go upstairs. And this young man, Tyler, who is a Marine, by the way, has never, <laughs> never, never came back to that house ever again. He was so scared, which I'm sure if he ever hears this, he'll be, he'll hate on me for ratting him <laughs> out. But he was a big baby that day. But he, um, he went up the stairs and something flew across the room at him. And he ran down the stairs, ran out the front door. He said he loved us. He's never coming back. Oh, gosh. Yeah. (laughs) And we were like, oh, come on. It's not that bad. (laughs) But um, since then, I've had neighbors who have stuff in their house. And they're like, why won't you come over? And I'm like, I'm good. Thanks. And I'm really awkward. And I don't have a lot of friends. And it's because I found that the smaller my circle, the less of these encounters I have. Right. Because when when I go out to parties or anything with people I don't know my surroundings and if there's someone there and I don't realize it like for example going to like boo bash in Lexington with my children for Halloween is Mm -hmm. terrifying absolutely terrifying in town square of Lexington there were a lot of hangings Mm -hmm. and I see people in the form that they died in so I mean people look messed up and I can't tell if they are alive or if they're dead on Halloween so (laughs) Halloween is difficult for me just like haunted hay rides cornfield walks I always have to second guess myself to see if, you know, they're there or they're not there. But I mean, there's also, um, and you know who Gaiden is, but across from her neighborhood, like behind it, there's a hospital Mm -hmm. and I can't even look at it. Hmm. Like I can't look out the window and she was just like, why? And I was like, something over there gives me like the goosebumps come out. And I said, I don't know what it is, but I will never go over there i won't even look over there and she was like well it was a hospital it's not a hospital anymore and i was like i don't care something happened over there and i will not go over there at all so so more or less you're not one of those people who kind of you know just walks up to people on the street and are like oh there's this man who's following you or you're not into the the gift (laughs) that much no it's not that i'm not into it it's just very frustrating because i don't see anything good i i like i have seen one thing that was good and it was a ball of light and it just gave me a really warm feeling Mm -hmm. but it was above my neighbor's head and he actually got into an argument with his wife and i had said to him i was just like your mom doesn't approve of you yelling at her and yeah. then he got mad at me because he was like oh my god you're crazy like i you don't know me that well and i was just like you know what i'm never gonna share anything with anyone ever again because he got really mad he was like who do you think you are talking about my mother right. and my relationship so i was like you know what i'm just gonna keep my mouth shut when i can say anything to anyone anymore so i don't and the only person who i've talked to about things really is my sister like no one in my family knows um, my husband knows, I think my mother-in-law thinks she knows, but she thinks I'm full of it. You know, I, a lot of people don't know Rhiannon, and the little girl I was telling you about who lived next door, her stepmother's house is just crawling with stuff. And, and one day I, I couldn't help it. And I said, I feel drawn to you. I was just like, do you, and it turns out she's like, a somewhere in her bloodline, she, they were shamans and she has like a shaman stone and like her uncles were medicine people. And I'm not sure what native American she is, but she like brought them in. Hmm. And so they're drawn to her. And I was just like, okay, well that's fine. But I don't feel comfortable because I don't know what's going on here. And they have a very tall, creepy, almost like a stick man, um, with bright blue eyes that's in their back bedroom. And I saw it once and I was like, yeah, I'm good. (laughs) <laughs> and I just, I was just like, I don't, I don't want to see that ever again. I don't really visit there anymore, but, um, it's interesting yeah. though, to hear this side of the story because, you know, watching all those shows and everything, you know, it seems like, oh, it's such a, you know, it's such a wonderful gift. We see spirits and, you know, it's interesting to see this side of it where it's more of like a frustration kind of. Well, it makes me very nervous because, you know, your whole life you're brought up on faith and and, uh, there's a lot of people who know me who think that I don't believe in God. And to be honest, that's not true at all. I just believe in my own way. And like church does not do it for me. I'm not a churchgoer. I don't think that I need to be there to believe in anything. But I do know I get a lot of flack from my family because I don't care if it's a Christian church. I don't care if it's a Catholic church. If it's church, it's church. And if I can go, I'll go. But, you know, like I, I don't really practice as much as I probably should but um I was also raised Catholic and you know after growing up I realized that some things in Catholicism just doesn't make any sense and understand why so many people get so confused with faith but Mm -hmm. for me it's 
what have I done? I mean, like, I've repented from what I said when my mom died. Mm -hmm. But what have I done so wrong that I don't ever see anything good? You know, like, I don't ever see anything good. So Mm -hmm. to me, it's it's very nerve wracking. Like, what? what do I have in store for me after this? Because I feel like I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's nothing good waiting for me because unless if he was just trying to prove his point, like I'm doing this to make sure you know that there is real evil and I do keep it away from people. And I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. He might be using you a, to help lesson. others because maybe you're, you're strong enough where most people aren't, you know? Yeah. It's, it's also, interesting because I have seen quite a few things like in yet again I was with Steve another story um this was obviously before uh he stopped talking to me but we went to his friend's house to just hang out for a little while it was one of his friend's girlfriend's birthdays whatever I don't know I was like it's party I'm coming so I went and I I just kept hearing piano keys Mm mm-hmm and they had a piano in another room and I was like is someone playing the piano and they were like no and I went in there, and, like, I could smell cigar smoke, and mm-hmm. I was like, yes, yes, I was like, so, I was like, all right, and Steve's like, it's happening again, isn't it, and he got really excited, and I think that made me really angry, because I was like, can you shut up, you know, like, we're, I, these people don't know me, and then I'm going to be known as, like, the crazy kid that you brought to that party one time, so I um, got really upset, but I said, hey, I know you don't know me. I don't know you. I've never been to these people's house. I knew nothing about them. And I made the mistake of being like, there is an old man that I can see in the corner right there in that chair. Right. And I said, he's smoking a cigar. And the kid just kind of looked at me and like dropped his glass. Like it was very dramatic, like (laughs) out of a movie. And he was just like, what is he saying? And I said, he said, black and white keys where's Adele and the kid started crying and I was like great oh, gosh. I screwed up another freaking party but his grandmother had just died Aww. and that was his grandfather and his grandmother's name was Adele well that's a so, good one though yeah but it wasn't because then he was just like <laughs> wow I brought the vibe down to the party real quick and it was bad so that's why like I try not to go anywhere and and the hard part is is that it's hard to keep something like this to yourself, especially living in such a historical rich place like around here and, you know, like in New Jersey. I mean, I'm sure there were tons. I didn't run into a whole bunch up there other than the stories I told you, but down here is different. Right. It's like, you know, there's a lot of history and, and most of the stuff in history that happened around here is not great. No. <laughs> so, no. It, and that's why Kevin's like, oh, maybe we should take the kids to Colonial Williamsburg. Oh, I was like, God. You're out to damn mine. <laughs> I was like, I'm Don't go there. Don't yeah. go to Charleston. <laughs> Don't go to Gettysburg. I know. But, you know, and it's hard because I do like Halloween and I do love horror movies and, mm-hmm. I, and I like to be scared, but this is like a different this is like the fear of God. So it's 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 difficult. I mean, I, I've got like a hundred more stories that I know we don't have time for, but I mean, it's 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 difficult to explain because it's almost like the sixth sense for me where I can see them as if I see you. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, as long as they, I know it sounds terrible, but as long as they died like a terrible death, I can tell they're not alive. Like no one walks down the street with an eye missing. The ones who did not, I kind of, have to dart and then look back and dart and so i'm sure in public people think i'm absolutely crazy but i do know that i told my husband i think that our daughter has some some things going on because Mm -hmm. she talks to me sometimes like and she was like well grandma wouldn't like that and Mm -hmm. she's never met my mother so you know she can pick her out of a lineup obviously i've shown her pictures now but when she was younger she could tell me which one was my mother and she it's like my mom visits her but that's the other thing that bothers me like why doesn't she ever visit me like, how come I don't get that privilege of seeing my mother? Because when I see her in my dreams, it's always, like, her getting upset at me at something I did. And I'm just like, great, now she knows that I drank so much last night I threw up or something. You know what I right, mean? Right, like, right. And people are like, oh, well, you have a guardian angel that's always looking out for you. And I was like, I don't I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that because <laughs> I think she only catches me doing bad stuff. But um, hmm. it's very strange. It's strange. <laughs> it's it's hard to explain, especially to most people, because people who are not in tune with that or believe it's fake. Like for a while, I was like, wow, that'd be so interesting. When I was younger, I was like, that'd be so cool to 
have something like that happen to you and it's not cool yeah that's why Um, I feel like you must be pretty mentally strong because I don't think I could handle anything like that well it's not so bad it's just especially people who've known me like my whole life or for a long time if they ever find out or hear something or I say something to them it's like they get so freaked out. Like I couldn't imagine being a Long Island medium and walking <laughs> up to people. My sister brought me to a medium, and uh, it was like a big dinner party, and my aunt got us the tickets. It was right after my mom died, and my sister's like, well, you have this gift. Like you guys are going to connect. And it's like I found out that that night that I have the ability to somewhat turn it off. She. It was a group of maybe like 50 people, and like just things were jumping out at her, and she was just like, does anyone know a John? She's like someone saying, John, 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 you know, like, and that's what she would say. And I'll never forget it because I was taking a sip of wine and she looked right at me and I almost spit it out all over the table. (laughs) And she goes, and she walked straight up to me and she goes, Jack, Jack, is Jack related to you? And my sister smacked me and she's like, that's our dad. And I just, I just looked down and then the woman like right two tables down was like, oh, we know someone named Jack. And she walked over there. So like, I just shut down and, and she left me alone. This is probably the most public thing I've ever done every place we go people figure it out and it's because like i'll blurt something out that i shouldn't know like i'll say something that i that they've never discussed with me Mm -hmm. that i just know and it's very it's very awkward and it makes it very uncomfortable and our neighbors when we first moved down here we moved to mooresville and our neighbors quentin and shonda had a spirit in their house Mm -hmm. and they told me oh we knew something was in there i was like yeah but that one's not happy he's not happy and they were just like what do you mean and I was like, I can see him. And, like, they didn't talk to us for, like, two months. I felt so bad. My husband, like, That's <laughs> he crazy. was like, why you guys scare everybody away? <laughs> but there was a Hispanic man, and he was angry, and he was just pacing around their house. And I could see them through the window. And right. I told them, I was like, you have a very disgruntled spirit in your house. I can see him. And they said I was nuts. They painted their doors blood red because they said it was, like, the blood of Christ. And they <laughs> took everything out of their house, and it didn't work. And I'm telling you right now that the sage – and all that stuff that people say, oh, you know, it rids everything. It's BS. It can keep them at bay and calm, but it does. It doesn't doesn't go anywhere. It right. doesn't do anything. And I do have an ultimate fear of Ouija boards. Mm-hmm. I will never ever allow one to cross the threshold of my house. People think that it's a joke. It is not a joke. I have seen it firsthand. It is not a joke. That thing is so scary. <laughs> And I remember some girls like, well, check out what I got for my daughter for her eighth birthday. I'm so excited. And it was a Ouija board. Yeah, and I was just no. like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm a big advocate of minding my own damn business when it comes to stuff on Facebook. Cause uh-huh. you know, everyone's a critic and everyone's oh, yeah. going to say whatever they want to say. And if I ever post something and I get a million comments, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to take it down. And so I decided not to say anything, but then I slowly watched and the comments were, you're crazy, burn it get it out of your house what were you thinking and then you have a couple comments who's like yay i'm gonna come over <laughs> so you know you get these people who wish for it and they don't they don't they don't get it it's not all you know roses and sunshine it's it's scary and i went to have you ever heard of the solstice festival uh-huh. the summer solstice yeah. okay it's in, it's in greensboro and they had a group of kids who were training to be i guess sort of clairvoyant my you know something and they had me sit in a room, and it was free, and he was just like, I want, and my, my friend was like, you need to do this. I just did it, and I came out crying. And I was like, why would I put myself in a situation where I want to cry, but whatever, okay. <laughs> so I went in, and I sat down. There were like five kids, and I say kids like they were 18 to 20, and they're just like, close your eyes, count to 10, and then open them. And it, I gave, they gave, that's enough time for all these kids to come up with something to say. And so they went around the room, and the first girl said something like, oh, I see I see, um, you know, sadness in your life. And I was like, oh, okay, Captain Obvious, you know, move <laughs> on. So, and then I, I get to, like, the third person in, and he goes, something kept showing me that you're a, that you're living your life as a day lily, where during the day you open up and you act like, okay, I'm here, I'm alive, but you die every night. Mm. And I was just like, yeah, that sounds pretty spot on. There's something in the back of my ear that's saying, be a san- sunflower stand tall be a sunflower be a sunflower and that was my mom's favorite flower i was like shit (laughs) (laughs) and then the next person said i also saw a sunflower i did a big sunflower and she was just like i i 
she's like, I hear a, um, a Beatles song. She's like, I don't know if that means anything to you. I was like, shut up. No way. And my mom, we always sang, here comes the sun. Yeah. And so, and she was just like, does that mean anything to you? And I was just like, I need to leave the tent. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out of here. And there were two more people. And I can't remember what the other two said, but it was all very powerful. Right. And it made me almost a little nauseous because you know it's a little overwhelming but it's like i i might be able to speak to her if i contact someone else but she will not come to me so i mean i i i do think that people need to broaden their horizons and understand that this is not fake there are too many unexplained activities i mean watching like paranormal investigators on tv <laughs> when they're like oh my god did you hear that and it's like no i didn't hear that what did you hear i hear static and it's hard to get into those shows because you have to like be in it it yeah. seems fake, you know, so I can understand people who don't believe it or refuse to believe it. Go ahead. Refuse. It's whatever you want. I've had I had a woman at church tell me that I was going to hell <laughs> because I'm seeing things that only demons see and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, whatever. And I just know that um, I wish it wasn't such a, a loony bin subject you know a taboo subject where people are like, oh, my God, you you did what you saw what, you know, the reaction are are hard which is why i told you i have to control myself do you is... feel like it's changing at all i feel like people are a little more open to it than they used to be maybe oh definitely like since since i started when i was 22 i mean I'm, this is 11 years ago i have met more and more people who are more like wow you know i had this experience with my friend you know we thought it was this like have you ever seen anything like this and you know, and, and I tell people all the time, you know, like, it takes a special person, that's why I'm so special, yes. <laughs> to do what I do, because, it, I mean, like, I have to be aware and very cautious, and if something happens, I have to make sure I don't bring it home, I have babies, I, I, I don't have the money to move, to be very smart. And my husband and his mother were like, oh, we were looking at maybe getting an old farmhouse <laughs> so my mom could move in with us. And I was like, an old farmhouse, huh? Yeah. I was like, that just, that just sounds like a crapshoot. You know, it's like, and and I'd hate to go in there and be like, nope, right back out. And so I, I don't know. It, it's difficult. It really is difficult. And it's hard, too, because a lot of people, when they meet you or anybody, that's not the first thing they think of. They don't look at you and be like, oh, I wonder if she's demons, you know, and it's as you get to know the person, you let your guard down a little bit or like me, I don't ever really get a chance to drink all that often. Like mm -hmm. I'll have a drink here or there, but when I have an option to drink a lot, mm -hmm. I prefer if Kevin's with me, <laughs> you know, I prefer that someone's there who knows something so that they don't so that I have someone I could run to and be like, hey, it's time to go, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 exhausting. Yeah, it sounds like it. You know, with the kids, that, that too, that too really scare me now that I'm older is me maybe inviting something by accident and becoming their problem because I don't need that for them. What I went through, I wouldn't wish on anybody. Like that night at the Princeton House, the West Windsor House, it was... Like every time I think about it, my ha my hair stands up and my heart races, and like my Apple Watch just told me to take a breath. So, <laughs> but it's 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 like a constant reminder that it's not BS, you know. And I'll ne like I I can close my eyes and see it like it happened yesterday. So it's just engraved in my brain, and I I try to tell people, you know, like this is not a joke. This is not a lifestyle that I was like, ooh, pick me, I want it. You know, because it's some people, you know, that's what they think. They either think it, you're full of crap or they're like, I want that. I want to see. I was like, no, you don't. So I think that's the only other issue that I have with it, that cinema has made it into like such a like a kind of cool subject, mm -hmm. which is nice because more people are open to it. But people say some really dumb stuff, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, I'm sure you've heard stuff on your talking to people. I mean, some people say like really 
really obnoxious stuff. They're like, really? My mom just died. Did you know that? Do you know her name? What's her name? And I'm just like, no, that's not how this works. I was like, if your mom chooses not to come to me, then she's probably in heaven living the dream. If she was some horrible person, I was like, I'll probably see her. (laughs) (laughs) That's terrible to say, but that's why when people are like, oh, my mom was a saint and I can see her. And I'm like, no, she was not. Yeah. I don't know what she did wrong, but no, ma'am. I think I also have that slight gift as well where I'll get like this really terrible feeling and then something bad happens mm-hmm. to somebody. And I've called Kevin at work and I'm like, what are you doing? He was just like, I'm working. What do you want? And I was just like, I just got a really bad feeling. Are you wearing your seatbelt? And did have a childhood experience or two, but it wasn't from the house. It was like in my mind, like, um, I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I was, I had to go to the bathroom and I got up and went to the bathroom and I was sitting there and I felt like I could smell my great aunt Margaret's house. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds really weird, but aunt Margaret lived uh, uh, at the Jersey shore and it was like, I I come from a huge family and like, we'd all pack into that house just to go to the beach for the weekend or whatever. There's this tiny little house and aunt Margaret, she always used to like put candy in her purse. And when we went to church, she'd like give it to all of us. And I just love my great aunt Margaret. And um, I remember I could smell her house. And I think it was the next day my mom told me that she had died. Mm. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, did she come visit me? And then I'm also adopted. But I would always have this dream of this older man. And he'd be in, like, every dream, every night. And I had no idea who he was. And he didn't, like, it wasn't like a pedophile thing. It didn't make me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It actually made me feel happy Mm -hmm. when I saw him. And um, he, I felt like he would visit me at night. And I remember telling my mom, like, I would have my books on my shelf go from bigger to smaller, and I would swear that when I woke up, they were the opposite. And my Mm -hmm. mom's like, you're crazy. (laughs) That's how your books always look. And I was like, no, they don't. And I, and I would dream, like, I'd wake up in my room, but I was still sleeping, and he'd be there. My mom's like, well, I don't know who it is, because I tried to describe it. We could never find a picture of this man, but I am adopted, so I was like, I wonder if my biological grandfather came to visit me you know like and I don't know who this person is and to be honest I don't really know that much about my history uh you know my biological parents I don't really know a lot of details I've never seen pictures of them you know nothing like that so I was like I wonder if I should dig into that I mean I could see him still like I know exactly what he looked like six foot maybe six one Mm -hmm. and he had like a very white uh trimmed beard and mustache and he, I, I can just see him. And it's very weird because you sit there and you look and you're like, who the hell were you? And now I'm an adult. And I, I'm like, and I, it's like I forget. I can go. I know. But I just don't. But it's, 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 very, it's very strange because I'm wondering if anyone on my biological side had anything going on. So, I mean, I, I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities to dig in deeper. I just, I don't know whether it's fear such an irrational fear because i mean it's not like i can't handle it i know i can handle it it's just do i want to know it's it's more of a guessing game but you know that's why it's hard for me to go there's a restaurant in town called rustic roots Mm -hmm. which i did not share this um with anybody yet but it used to be a hotel and they do have something in there i love the food so i will keep going back but (laughs) um but like some of the buildings in town have quite a bit of history as well a place called Lanier's there's quite a bit going on in there mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm thinking about this I mean this is going to be on a podcast I really hope Lanier's doesn't call and be like what the hell's in my shop you know but um <laughs> just <laughs> I might have just opened a whole can of worms but I just know that uh there are, there are several you know lingering things that I, I don't investigate myself like I had the opportunity to go on a candlelight walk through historic Salisbury this October and I was like I'm good that's I, the kind of stuff that I love but I don't ever you know I mean I, I don't see dead people so it's right, a little it's easier for if, me if I could go and just calm myself you know mm-hmm. like like yet again American Horror Story the coven it, you know um uh Madame LaLaurie was a real person and you can go into her house. And I was like, that would be the death of me. You know, like, would it be, or can I turn it off? You know, like, and I'll never know until I test the theory, but it's something that I want to do by myself. You know, I don't think I even want Kevin there. I think I'd rather go and do something. And like, I used to travel with my family, like all over, we went to Italy and you know, oh, I've been everywhere, but um, yeah, it was very fortunate growing up. We got yeah. to do a lot of stuff, but I was like, 
what if I had this ability when I was in Rome? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, you imagine? I, went into the, I went into the catacombs, you know, like terrifying. <laughs> so, I mean, like, and I, I always think about that. And like, then there's corny people who are like, oh, you know, there's a graveyard right there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I see it. <laughs> I don't see anything in it, but yeah. I see it. So it's just, it's, it's just a very strange thing. And it's, it's, it's hard for people to grasp. So like, I do appreciate being on this yeah. podcast, but hopefully maybe someday you'll get someone else on there who is confused as I am. And I can have a friend or you just avoid historic places together. So that'd be nice. <laughs> a lot of people who can embrace it. Like, that's awesome. Like, I feel like if I didn't have children and, uh, and that's another weird thing is that I was told I could never have children. And, um, I got pregnant with Maggie like two months after I was told I couldn't have children. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so <laughs> surprise for us, you know, like a year and a half later we had grace and then, uh, it's like it's like weird thing, and I and I know that it all could be like coincidence. I'm not really a big fan of coincidence, but really weird things happen to me. Like at work, I I used to work at a place called Legged and Platt, and I made bed frames, mm-hmm. and uh, I did night shifts, and I had a big stack of metal, and it started to fall. And of course, like the idiot I am, I thought I could just lean on it and it would go back up, and it didn't. And I got a hernia from it. Well, they rushed me to the emergency room, and they found cancer cells on my ovary and but they said that that always goes like undetected and Mm -hmm. if i didn't have the hernia they would have found it and it's like did i do that am i just lucky or did something else do that for me you know like and i always think about stuff like that because it's it's like because i see so many things i always wonder you know like did someone tell me to try to catch it to save me in the long run i don't i never know i just it like that's why it's hard when people are like oh i wonder what's going on in your head i was like no you don't 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 do that because this is like an everyday thing like i think way into everything to the point where a lot of people who meet me are like you should probably be on xanax you know like because i just my brain just goes 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 and i forgot to mention as well the west windsor house since we have sold it it has sold three other times so i think whatever is there is still there because nobody buys a house like West Windsor in New Jersey is ridiculously expensive mm-hmm. and people do not buy a house for a million dollars and sell it six months later. They don't do that. West Windsor is known for like the number one schools and the best special needs care and, you know, the best like uh, the doctor from house, the guy house, uh, he he works in princeton medical center i mean like people move there for specific reasons and you do not buy a house like ours and just keep moving out of it so i i never said anything to my family but i was like it's very interesting how we lived there for 24 years and all of a sudden it keeps changing hands why is that it's for sale again (laughs) i saw it online the other day it's for sale again so Hmm. we'll just have to Wait and see what happens to the next people. Yeah, I do know right? my neighbor, who's our real estate agent, is probably rolling in money right now. But She's like, yay. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yay, someone's moving out of it again. <laughs> but... Well, thank you so much for sharing those stories. I know you have a ton, so maybe eventually you could tell us some new ones. Um... Oh, Lord. Hopefully people enjoy. those weird feelings that you learn over the years just to not ignore. Sounds like this woman definitely has that gift or curse, however you look at it. Well, we appreciate all of you listening to the Unrest Podcast. Hopefully you got some good history, some haunted house, uh, a good real life haunt, and keep listening to the Unrest. We still want everyone to send in their stories. We love hearing everyone's different stories that has to do with paranormal or just, you know, weird things. Weird broom things, it. you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, have you done something weird with a broom? We want to know. <laughs> we want, we want <laughs> to know. The Unrest Podcast at gmail.com. Our video. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't want to know. I rescind that offer. <laughs> The Unrest Podcast at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call at 843-564-2101. But we know you're not going to do that. <laughs> but we do. We have a number anyway. It's fine. Unrest, Unrest in peace. peace.